We have Donald Trump is on trial. He's not even going to get to go to his own kid's graduation. The judge is ridiculous. And, of course, the talk of the world, Iran, for the first time ever, has attacked Israel from its homeland. And probably even during this program, maybe live, we may get the notification. Israel has said they will retaliate, and it will be significant. Is this the beginning of World War III? In my opinion, it is. That and more tonight on The Big Picture Live. Let's go. All right, everybody's coming on in. I can see everybody coming in. Let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. Let us smash that like button if you are watching us on uh, Rumble. Make sure you follow us there on Rumble as well. We love our Rumble family. We're growing over there, and we've got some things planned that we're going to do eventually with our Big Picture family that will be exclusive to the Rumble channel. So make sure that you go over there and subscribe to that. Um, tonight, there is a lot going on in the world, a lot going on in our own, my own little world here, and uh, <laughs> we've gone through a lot of stuff. As we do each and every week, we go through so much stuff. We're praying that our equipment will handle it itself tonight. Uh, just this week, I recorded a program. It was a one-hour program, got to 55 minutes, and the power went out, and we lost everything. So, yeah. We're used to things like this. And as you know, uh, my lovely co-host will be coming on a little bit later. Uh, she is still recovering from total knee surgery. Many of you have asked how she's doing. She is getting better, but I'll let her update you when she comes on the program in just a moment on just where she is standing right now in her recovery mode. And you guys keep praying for her. We appreciate it so much. Uh, one of the things I want to say that I don't normally take the time to say, and I really do need to make more time to do this, is uh, if you are new to the channel, and, and or maybe you love the channel, and for whatever reason you just never click subscribe, make sure you hit that subscribe button tonight because we are per approaching, and it's shocking to me to say this, uh, we're almost to 10,000 subscribers at the time of this live stream, 9,200 and something. So we're, we're pushing for 10K, baby. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe to the channel tonight and copy and paste this show and send it to, let's say, 10 people and that you know, 10 people in your family, 10 people that you work with, and uh, say, hey, look, there's a show. It's got a husband and a wife. They just they just have fun together, but they cover things that you're not going to hear on the mainstream media, and it's called The Big Picture, and you need to know The Big Picture. So push them in that direction. And then uh, last but certainly not least here, I want to remind you that you can always go to our website, uh, LarryRaglin.com, LarryRaglin.tv, and on the, on the website, you can see featured at the top is an amazing program that I was a part of with Tony Merkel. If you have not watched this yet, go to LarryRagland.com. It's the best and easiest way to go directly to it. It's not on my channel. It's on his channel called The Confessionals. And I, it's an in-depth talk about CERN and how CERN re, restarted, turned it back on. It had been down for a long time, and they restarted, chose to restart it on April 8th, y'all, the same day as the total eclipse. And uh, when we recorded this, we had no idea that, that was going to happen. And the timing, and Tony talks about at the beginning of the program, Tony talks about how uh, when, that this program came out the day after the eclipse. So it's just really incredible, and it's been one of his most viewed programs he's, he's had, certainly in recent years. Last number, I think right now, is somewhere around 58,000 views, but uh, we'd like to take that thing to 100,000 views. So go out there and check it out, and you can just go right to LarryRaglin.com or LarryRaglin.tv, and you can see that. So as I've done last week, I'm going to do it again this week. I'm going to begin the program by myself, and then uh, the, my co-host, the queen, will be coming in. She will be here with us tonight. Going to take a little, few more minutes to get into the studio than normal. But we're going to start, before we get into this, we're going to start with breaking news today. Um, why is this already happening this way for me? Okay, I'm just going to, oh uh, yeah, it always happens. Hang on one second. Let me see if I can just do this. Sandy won't be in the picture, or maybe she will be in the picture. Nope, she's not in the picture. That's good. Uh, so thank you for that super chat, by the way. Bravo, Mike. What a blessing. Thank you. Let me give you a hand right there. Bravo, Mike. Thank you. So you can see the empty space. She will be filling that space soon. 
Uh, but Judge uh, is going to probably force and has made a statement they're going to force Trump to skip his own son Barron's high school graduation. Now, I know some of you are just thinking, you know, in the grand scheme of what's what he's facing, this might not be the biggest thing in the world. But he loves his son. And by the way, look how big his son is. I mean, come on, somebody. He's just he's graduating high school. He tower Trump is not a small dude himself, and he towers over Trump. Uh, but New York Supreme Court Justice uh, Juan Merchant has said to, uh, to former President Donald Trump, can attend, has yet to say, if he can attend his son Barron Trump's high school graduation, refusing to rule out the former president's request to not attend the trial that specific day for the event. Now, what is this about? Uh, the, Monday was the start. Today was the start of the criminal trial at the hands of Democratic Manhattan uh, District Attorney Alvin Bragg, who charged Trump with 34 felonies, accusing him of falsifying business records in relation to payments made to Want star Stormy Daniels. Uh, as Breitbart has pointed out, Trump is being accused of, you can see what it says there, uh, covering up a scandal. Uh, Trump has denied all charges against him, but if convicted, he could face jail time. Jury selection is expected to, become, to begin this week. Now, what I want to say to you, you know, we're not an a, a openly political channel here, uh, but we're not ashamed of where we stand. But what is happening with Trump is they are, they are mandating that he is to be there every day of the trial. And I believe they're saying it could go up to eight weeks. And the judge said today that he is not beyond arresting the former president, arresting the former president if he fails to appear in court for any given day. And he has literally requested and said, look, I'm coming. I'm, I'm running for president. I'm, I'm supposed to be campaigning, but I'm putting my campaign off. I'm going to be here. But could I please go see my son graduate high school? He's only going to do that one time. Well, the judge has yet to imply whether he's even considering that. And I just think it's ridiculous. I don't, I don't care how you feel about Donald Trump. I don't care if you think he's, he's part of the problem. If, if, you're, if you're just one that ain't going to vote for anybody, you're not going to choose the lesser of evils. Or if you just think Trump's the greatest thing in the world. The bottom line is this. It ain't right, y'all. People, people that are criminals that have horrible, horrible things that they've been accused for uh, are able to get off to go to funerals and things like that and maybe even postpone the the – the actual court for them to come back. But, you know, who knows what's going to happen. I'm hoping that it, that they, they're not stick to the line like that. And also, they're also by the way, too, and, you know, we're not going to be heavy Trump tonight, but also uh, they're already beginning to ask to fine him for violation of the gag order. Even though Stormy Daniels, her attorney, uh, and all of the other attorneys for all the other things he's been accused for can get on talk shows and talk all about it. They've forbidden him to talk about it. And I just think that's just crazy and ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, by the way, uh, thank you for all the super chats, all the super thanks that come in throughout the program. You guys are amazing. Last week was our biggest show we ever had, and the week before that was the biggest show we'd ever had at that point. So I'm really going to believe God we're going to have the biggest show again uh, tonight as well. Well, of course, the discussion is Israel, and uh, Israel is the center of the whole world right now. And of course, that means, you know, first of all, let me back up. From a preacher standpoint, the Bible says that Israel is the apple of God's eye, okay? we Some people would say things like God's chosen people and all of this. I know there's probably some people watching this program that don't subscribe to that. Uh, they They subscribe to you know, that Israel is no longer God's chosen people, the, that now the church is. And there's this thing called replacement uh, theology, which I do not subscribe to. I believe that the, uh, the Jewish people are still the apple of God's eye. I do believe also that they do have to receive Jesus as Messiah to go to heaven because he made it very clear that he's the only way. Uh, but the Bible does say this, regardless of how you feel about the nation Israel, regardless about how you feel about uh, what they've done in Gaza, what they've done in the history since they've been rebirthed as a nation in 1948. Uh, the Bible says they're called the fig tree, and it says watch the fig tree. When you want to know that the end is coming near, watch the fig tree. So we know that Israel 
is the is the number one thing that we need to be focusing on. And of all things, and I'm going to show you tonight, that's why we call this thumbnail just simply WW3, World War III. Is it coming? Is Israel's retaliation against Iran going to trigger global war? The reason I believe it is is because it is the center of the whole world. And as Israel goes, so goes the world. And as Sandy goes, so goes Larry. <laughs> So I want to welcome her in <laughs> because I ain't nobody without her. Oh, babe, All right. sweet. All right, now I got Justin. You, are you comfortable where you're at? Okay. I'm comfortable at the moment. All right, so I'm going to just adjust you over a little bit. That could change. We'll move you over. You just get where okay. you need to be, and I'm going to move the camera to mm, you. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But there she is, y'all. She made it. <laughs> Sorry for my tardiness. Um, sometimes it's just tough. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, that's all you got to say. I'm trying as hard as I can to move fast, and I just can't move fast. That's all right. Your day's coming, baby. You're getting yes. stronger by the day, and one day we're going to get in here on a Monday night, mm -hmm. and you're going to say, I am back. I ain't, I ain't hurting. I, totally. And I'm looking forward to that day. So we soldier on in the meantime. Exactly. So I heard you um, talking about a lot of things while I was trying to get ready to uh, trying to get in here. So... Um, Definitely. I just want to say again, if you've not checked out that episode with Tony Merkel at the confessionals, let's push this thing to 100,000. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is tremendous. The and best I, way to do it is just go to LarryRagon.com and you'll see it right there at the yes, top. Yes, and I'm so proud of you. This is a great episode. Thank you. And um, everybody needs to check it out. I'm so thankful for last week. Those of you who were with us live, those of you who were with us last Monday night, um, what a tremendous time. What a tremendous trip. Yeah, it was. The the eclipse, y'all, we, we could talk about that every day. That was just incredible. But right. One, one of the things I said Sunday at our church is I believe it was a harbinger. Oh. I, I believe it was a sign in the heavens that something shifted. I was just shifted. about to ask you, do you still feel, especially in light of this weekend's yes. Um, developments that it was a harbinger. Absolutely. Because I, I know some people were critical. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going to happen. We've known this solar eclipse was coming for ages, forever, you know, more than seven years. And we know when the next one will be. Okay, we know that. That was not the intention of that statement. We were simply saying, yeah, you need to behold yeah. and observe the yeah. event because there's truly nothing like it. But to wait and see if it was a harbinger. And we're not even saying that it definitely, absolutely was for for this I development. And I mean, it, it probably I is. Am. What if there's something else it was a harbinger for? What I if this it, is just the yeah. very beginning That's what of I mean. events? That's what I, mean. yeah. I, I believe it was a harbinger of a shift of everything, yeah. that, that we've just gone into a whole nother world. I mean, I, I really believe 2024, think about it, 2024 mm -hmm. is the year of the open door. Yes. And... You know, we know and we claim the year of the open door. And by the way, when we say it's the year of the open door, we mean that because according to the Jewish calendar, the name of this year is called the open door. Yes. So this is the year of the open door. But I believe it's War not just— War in 24, the year of the open door. I think I heard something like that. War in 24, more in 24, doors in 24. Okay. I know that's cliche -ish. And the fabulous Joseph Z. Yes. I've been just, I don't know, I've got a little caught up with some things, so I haven't checked in with him in a couple of days, but is he still on his trip right yes, now? Yes, they're all in Turkey right now going to wow. Seven Church of Asia. <laughs> but what I'm saying is mm. I believe it's been it, it's an open door for the enemy as well. I believe, oh, yeah. I believe that's why that, that CERN episode is so important because we talk a lot about portals. Yes. And we talk about, and you, talk, you think about it, if, if this <clears> was a harbinger, <throat> meaning a sign and predictive that something is coming, Yes. Uh, and then you restart. CERN on the same day as that harbinger, what are they trying to tap in? What kind of doors are they trying to open? That ain't what this show is about, Sandy, but I think no. for a few minutes we do need to talk about well, yeah, something just, has shifted in the spirit realm. Let's park there for a couple of minutes. So um, you touched lightly on 4-8, um, the day of the eclipse. CERN decides to start back up the right. Large Hedron Collider there on the border of France and Switzerland, if I'm correct in my assessment. That's right. Um, also, that day, Higgs. The death of Peter Higgs. Peter Higgs. You know Higgs boson. Yeah. And tell them um, what that is if they don't know what that is. 
Higgs boson is the God particle, which is how how do you say this? That they are trying to they tried to recreate, recapture, recreate the God particle, observe whatever the God, what they call the God particle. So did you say his first name was Peter? Peter Higgs. Okay, so I Peter Higgs. So he died on that day. He died on that day. Y'all. And some people believe, April 8, 2024. You know, maybe he was possibly sacrificed. <laughs> um, yeah, we need a the, sound the, effect the, for the that. The but, algorithm. I, maybe I covered up. And, and, if those of you who think oh, that's crazy talk, that's harsh. What, what are you talking about? Um, go back to the year 2015 or 2016 when they dedicated the Goddard or Gothard yes. tunnel yes. that oh, is evil that is involved with CERN. There were rituals like you would not believe. Absolutely. Some people say an actual live female was mm-hmm, at yeah. that event. Yeah. Others say, no, 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 that right. was not an actual living person. But there were rituals. I mean, this went on for yep. hours. Yep. People in full costume, dancing, gyra. I mean, it was just, you. if you want to see it, I'm sure you can go oh, find yeah. it oh, somewhere. Yeah. But yeah. Um, in the realm of this group of people, yeah. This is how it is. This and, is how it is. There and, must be sacrifice. And think about this, because we're going to Israel now. Because within a week, I want you to think about this. Mm-hmm. Of course, October 7th happened. We all know about what's happened since then in Gaza. Yeah. But there's just been really almost like a stalemate. They've just sort of got all the way to Rafa, and it's just sort of been status quo. And there's been this talk about... And it's weird. The day before the eclipse was exactly six months. Exactly six since months. That attack no, in the Israel. The number of man. Um, six. You know, we <coughs> use the word escalation so much, and it's like <laughs> from week to week. Yeah. The new week outdoes the week before oh, in yeah, escalation yeah. in I, some I was, or one or more areas. <laughs> I, I'm literally going through news articles, and I'm like, "Have we already covered this?" And I realized that we covered it. The last week, but it feels like it was a month ago. But but let me let me finish this point here. So it's a harbinger. It's a sign. Mm-hmm. The Bible tells us it is that he put them in the heavens for signs. So it is a sign. Okay. What is it a sign for? People can debate that. But it's a sign. And, then, and it's not it's not a new function of signs. No. Jonah and Nineveh in yeah. the 40 days. Yes. And as soon as he rolls into town, no. an eclipse happens. Exactly. And these people take it for a sign. Yeah. Yeah. This exactly. is not a, nothing new here. So within a week of CERN restarting, a total solar eclipse that yes. we will not see for another 20 years. And by the way, people tend to just brush off the fact that seven of the planets were perfectly in line from Jerusalem. The only place in the world that you could see them in perfect line with the naked eye was Jerusalem wow. in the same week. And then that week of ran. Because remember, last yeah. week, we, this is how things changed. Last week we reported that Amar Safadi, Amar Safadi said mm-hmm. that in Syria, his intelligence were saying that Iran had shipped Hundreds of suicide drones, and it was estimated that they were going to launch an attack against Israel right. from Syria. Everybody expected that, and then all of a sudden, Mm-mm. now they for the listen. You got to get this tonight. If you've not heard this, uh, and if you've not been following this, you may not realize this. It, Iran has been calling for the total destruction of Israel since Israel has been a rebirth nation, yep. since 1948. And in, in, in the last 30 to 40 years, they have openly chanted death to America and death to Israel. But they have never attacked Israel from Directly. Iran. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that super chat, Cheryl. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Thanks, Cheryl. But they've never done that. Right. So this was unprecedented. It was a weekend of first. Not only had that not happened, but also was it not the largest drone and ta- was it tactical missile? The what was largest it? combined drone and uh, missile and uh, attack. Forgot, attack in the history of the world. Yeah. N- not 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 airplanes and stuff, but but uh, yeah. targeted ballistic missiles. Which, by the way, I don't know if you know this. Israel is saying that the ballistic missiles that were fired against 
them from Iran were supersonic missiles, and they took them out in space. They Did went they, in space and I took heard, them out. I heard this. So is the number 99%? 99% that they were able, they were able to eliminate. And eliminate. 99%. So impressive. You know the hand of God has to be with them for that. But, well, let's get into it. You know, Iran, it, they have these sophisticated drones. It's not like they had to order them in from somewhere. No, no. They're manufacturing these because they but, have such advancement but in you know, that one of, one of the things they said this week, and we're going to we're about to go heavy into news articles right now, uh, is that uh, they're saying that they were u- they were using up all of their old technology because a lot of this technology Israel was easily uh, able to take out. Okay, I think I did hear that as well. And, and they said they threatened Israel, whether yes. it's true or not. They threatened Israel if you come back at us again, mm-hmm. then we're going the next retaliation. We're going to use weapons that we have never used and you didn't even know we had. So I don't know what you're about to say, but while you're getting there, was it today that we were, you and I were talking about that Amir Sarfati said expect something within 24 hours? 24 hours, hours yeah, which which basically is less than 12 hours now. When, and you're, from the he's time he said talking that. about, but he was talking about specifically the reta- from Israel. From Israel, from Israel, yes. And, and we got... Please touch on the ridiculous, well, in my opinion, a ridiculous response from Iran after. Oh, yeah. After their. Yeah. Well, let's let's just hit. We got several okay. articles here. Let's start okay. off with this one. And uh, this is because a lot of it involves the United States and their response. Israel's response to Iran's drone and missile barrage may be imminent, as we've talked extensively already, as an, an Israeli official has warned. As, and such a revenge strike, quote, will be coordinated with the Americans, they stressed. Mm-hmm. Boy, he looks like he's really focused. Okay, I'm, I, that was mean. Uh, all right, so. That was mean. That was mean. I shouldn't say that. Uh, but this is this is the war room for Israel that was convened, uh, the war council. And uh, let's, let's go down to the article here. This just, just give you an idea here, a map of what happened here. When the jets uh, stop Iran's missile away, the threat comes despite the U.S. vowing not to support Israel in retali- retaliatory strikes against Iran. Other world leaders have also urged restraint. Speaking after Israel's war cabinet meeting on Monday, the spokesperson said Israeli officials believe it's important any return attacks closely follow Iran's Sunday night bombardment. Several diplomatic and military options were examined during the cabinet meeting. They said adding any response will be coordinated with the Americans. It comes as Iran today vowed to launch 10 times the amount of missiles in a fresh strike against Israel if it is unleashed uh, a retaliatory hit on Tehran. The new threat could see 1,460 missiles hurled at Israel as world leaders hold their breath to see if an uncontrollable war breaks out in the Middle East. And, of course, it goes on to explain the council issued a chilling warning that said if the Zionist regime persists in its evil actions against Iran by any means and to any extent, it will face a response at least tenfold greater of a similar nature. Wow. So they're threatening back and forth. Yeah. Can I have one of those waters? Yes, sir. You may. Uh, they're 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 Let's threatening. Go. They're they're just going back and forth, and and they're saying that they're going to coordinate with America in anything they do. But let me just tell you what that means. That doesn't mean that they're going to get America's permission because America's already told them, hey, we'll back you, but we're not going to really fully support you right. with our own people. So basically, I think they're going to check the box that they let that let America know what they're going to do, but I believe they're going to do whatever they're going to do with or without America's support. Oh, boy. Yeah. It's strange. Y'all, it's about to get real. I, I'm, that's what I was just about to say. It's strange where we are, you know. Um, even to see the leadership in our country and people within our country, yeah. how there was, there seemed to be a lot of compassion mm-hmm. right after October 7th. And, all, you know, our hearts were heavy because that was yeah. a terrible, terrible day. But it did not take long yeah. for people to start showing up demonstrating yep. and the voices to start and the opinions to start. And for some people, I'm not going to call any names, but people
people that you would not expect to be using the tone and yeah. making the statements that they're making towards right. Israel right. that are making them now. And it started slowly, but it's getting a little stronger and yeah. a little more frequent. In such, my point was in such a short amount of time, yeah. how opinions uh, can be swayed and, and people and, can be swayed. You know, and the word you used there was compassion. Sure. And, and we have compassion on the innocent people of Iran, right. the innocent people of Palestine, the Ill, innocent people of all the enemies of Israel that are involved in this attack. And by the way, whether it's Ukrainian people, Russian people, Chinese people, sure. Taiwan, Ta Taiwanese people, if they're if they're in the in the middle of a war, mm -hmm. there's always the majority of human beings in that nation are always going to be innocent bystanders. They're not sure. going to be the instigators. Uh, but I will say this: that within some of these places that the media is pushing and all of these protests, and we're going to show you some of these ridiculous protests in what's happening here in our country and around yep. the world. Uh, look at this. As, as the attacks are coming, Hamas, Hezbollah, and Palestinian Islamic Jihad uh, begin to party in the streets and applaud Iran's attack on Israel. Yeah, I'm sure. Because they're all sworn enemies, and they're all things. When you hear uh, from the river to the sea, that means annihilation. That sure. means no longer exist. Yep. Lebanon's Hezbollah, Hamas, and Palestinian Islamic Jihad praised Iran on Sunday for attacking Israel, describing the massive but largely ineffective wave of drones and missiles as brave, legal, and natural. Uh, Iran state-controlled press TV on Sunday described the two terrorist organizations as resistance groups and insisted the Iranian attack infected major damage on Israeli military targets. Contrary to all reports from Israel, Press TV used Iran's preferred, uh, what is that, moment? I can't even see what that, what that is. Nomenclature. What does that mean? Of Operation True Promise. Billy Mitchell, get us an exact definition of that. <laughs> Billy, how does, uh, it, how does it feel to know that she calls on you every time we need to know something? Uh, sorry, to sorry to put that all on. He's my go-to guy. But I want to uh, say yeah. something real quick. I want to ask you if you know this. It is proven that Iran has been using footage that they Googled <clears throat> and played that has been matched by AI to be perfect matches of fires in France. You're talking about stock footage stock, of past events. Yeah, and that are them, not even in the country. Yeah, in and, other countries. And in they're some saying, cases. "Look what we did to Iran," and they're showing buildings burning. And you but know, it's like from two and three years ago in France. And you know, I have said this to you on multiple occasions: is how do we know that that's even? Yeah. To do with we don't whatever this article is in the news. We don't know. We don't know if any of this stuff is really true. I'm, we're doing our best and our due diligence How to make it true. How many times have you have you seen a video uh, bite with the president on his way to the helicopter, or somebody supposedly standing in the street or out in front of the White House and looked and like. That does not even look real. Yeah, are, are they true. in front of a green screen? Are they yeah. even where they're telling us or presenting themselves to be? So right. that brings to my mind this statement. Don't believe anything you hear and only half of what you see. Mm, profound, baby. Look here. This is, I like this graphic. It really breaks it down. Iran's attack on Israel, what we know so far, uh, 170 drones fired. None penetrated Israel. 120 ballistic. Thanks, Blaine. 100, he I he saw says it. choosing a name. Thanks. So, so, so nomenclature <laughs> means I'm choosing a name for things. So I, I, I made up a name to talk about me choosing a name for things. How, they do that all the time on the Weather silly. Channel. How they silly. name every storm and That's hurricane silly. and blizzard. So, you know, yeah, we shouldn't come down too hard on them for that. Exactly. 120 <clears> ballistic <throat> missiles fired. 10 penetrated Israeli territory. There was 32 Israelis treated for injuries and anxiety, 30 cruise missiles fired, none penetrated Israel, 80 drones, watch this, a lot of people don't know this, were downed and three ballistic missiles downed by the United States, and 698 sirens sounded in Israel through the night. Few missiles caused slight damage infrastructure, three Jordanians were killed, no Israeli killed, and $1.2 billion, the cost of Israeli defense for that one night, cost them $1.2 billion to defend that one night. 
Now, American, Amer- I don't know if you know this, big picture, <clears throat> but American planes and American pilots launched from aircraft carriers and went into the sky and downed many of these drones and ballistic missiles. Wow. So, so we had, we had, uh, and I think there was another country. Can't think of the other country. That, was it England? RAF? No, 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 it was one of the Middle Eastern countries uh, oh. uh, that actually helped. And I okay. think it might be Jordan, but I'm not sure. Hmm. But that because it came across their air. But um, but U.S. U.S. pilots. So the question that people keep saying is, <clears throat> will America be drawn into it? America's already there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And not only America's that America's already participating. And not only that, but how soon until Israel has to come asking us for more help? Obviously. This is very yeah. costly. <clears throat> oh yeah, that's coming. They're going they're going to need everything. They're yeah. going to need help with everything even more than we already are. And I just hope that you know our officials respond correctly. Yeah. Well, speaking of the the Israeli officials, that this is what they're saying. Everybody's reporting this. And by the way, if anybody gets breaking news that yes. has begun tonight while the live program is going to let us know, mm. we, we should get notifications on our yes, we should on our phones. But we'll see. But the latest coming from Israel is they are saying after the war council is that they will respond to Iran's attack. Uh, and but they are being urged by people all over the country, all over the world, by leaders to restrain. Watch this. Yeah, of course. Israel's military chief Monday uh, said Monday that the country will respond involving uh, the attack that came on them involving hundreds of drones, ballistic missiles, and cruise missiles. World leaders are urging Israel not to retaliate. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak says, quote, all sides must show restraint to avoid a rising spirit of violence in the Middle East. French President Emmanuel Macron said in Paris, Paris will try to, quote, convince Israel that we must not respond by escalating. The Iranian attack on Saturday marked the first time Iran had launched a direct military assault on Israel. Despite decades of the in, of enmity dating back to the country's 1979 Islamic Revolution, mm-hmm. the attack happened less than two weeks after a suspected Israeli strike in Syria that killed two Iranian generals mm-hmm. in an Iranian consular building. An Israeli military spokesman said that 99% of the drones and missiles that were launched by Iran was intercepted. So does this feel like um, a percentage of the world is now trying to back a narrative. Oh yeah. So when you Already. pile on, when you pile on after um, Israel's retaliation, um, no, Iran's ta- retaliation, and then said, "Okay, okay, we've done what we've done now. It's good, right?" And yeah. Oh and, yeah. They said that. Look, look, we're we did our part. You did this, so we did our mm-hmm. stuff. Let's just walk away. Let's and just call go it back a, tr- to the status a truce quo. right now. Like yeah. we're going to run over here in the trees and, and and hide and or you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. To me, I felt like that statement and all of these countries coming out and saying what they said is just creating a pathway or creating a narrative for the world to right. easily say, yeah. "Listen, yeah. Israel." You know, back down. Yes. Cool it off. Cool it off. So we see, I guess we, it's it's the waiting game right now. We see what happens and next. This is the article I was thinking of. I didn't know I really had it, but American sailors and airmen helped thwart the Iranian missile attack. Mm-hmm. All I want to show you here is that it says that U.S. sailors from the U.S. Arleigh Burke uh, and USS Kearney stationed in the Mediterranean Sea, the, the sea destroyed four to six Iranian ballistic missiles according to a senior military operative. But the interesting thing, and really, and I know it wasn't because they were pro-Israel, but what is interesting is this right here. Jordan joined yeah. United States and UK in intercepted. You were right. UK was involved as well. Mm-hmm. So Jordan, UK, and the U.S. all intercepted Iranian drone attacks over Israel. Can you imagine uh, the pressure that is against Jordan for doing that? as well as Saudi Arabia has openly come out today and said the entire thing that's happening in Israel is Iran's fault. 
in in Saudi Arabia, this this I Saudi heard, Arabia Saudi Arabia came out and blamed Iran for October seventh, and I found out today. Some of you that's watching probably already knew this. I knew that Saudi Arabia and Iran hated each other, but on um, goodness on the Glenn Beck program this morning, he had a gentleman on there, and they were talking, and they said that the uh, Muslims in Iran hate Saudi Arabia more than they hate America, and that it, they because of the Sunni and the Shiite mm. and the different types of right. Muslims that literally hate each other. And so Saudi Arabia has said that the reason Iran pushed Hamas to do what they did on October 7th is because they, the Abrahamic covenants were being pushed and where people were holding out hope that Trump was going to come become president again and that they were going to have a manageable peace, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Egypt, and some others, with Israel, and Iran did not want that. So they wow. basically came out today, Saudi Arabia did, and called out Iran. And now you got Jordan. Now, I know it was because you know they were, it was in their region. They were protecting their own interests. But the fact that they took down Iranian drones mm -hmm. alongside the United States and the United Kingdom, which is the great Satan, according to mm -hmm. them, that's a pretty significant thing, y'all. Something strange is happening over there. Well, it's uh, so we know because you have spoken to Stan Deo and we've talked about this, that um, – Musama bin Salman yes. is in an alliance of some sorts. Uh, it's more of a business partnership with uh, Jared Kushner. Yep. And that they have plans for that coastal. Here's looking at you, Paul Jenkins. That's an inside joke. <laughs> that coastal uh, property that we're trying to get all of. Um, help me out here. I got so many things running through my mind. Down in Gaza, we're trying to get all the Palestinians yes, yeah, the Ra pushed Ra 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 out yeah. of there and yeah. take, you know, take hold and develop this <laughs> very nice and costly coastal property that uh, the Palestinians, I hate to say it, but these people that are such pawns, yep. they are used by so many. Right. They were parked into that region. We had like two million people in a small confined area. And now since October 7th, they've been, you know, nobody wants to take them. So they're just pushed all over the place trying to find safety. Yep. And um, so I can see that aspect of Saudi Arabia and Jared Kushner, who is Jewish, who, you know, lives in America, as far as I know, right now at this moment, um, having that alliance. But I was not aware of all of the other players. Right. Listen, can you do us a favor right now? If this show is giving you value, can you hit that like button, whether you're on Rumble or on YouTube? And when you do that, um, I want to <clears throat> I want to just hang on a second. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, I don't know where am I to take you out of the yeah. picture. Here we go. All right. All right. So. If you can do that, uh, just go ahead and hit that like button on Rumble or on YouTube. And here's what I want you to do. Take a second. Just take a second. Click the share button on this YouTube show. Copy that and send it to about five people while we're talking. Just go ahead and send it to about five people that you love. Say, hey, you got to watch this program. Or click that Facebook uh, share button and share it to Facebook. Uh, but, yeah. That you know, it was just very interesting that Jordan and the United States and the United Kingdom all came together to bring down these drones. Um, so yeah, Sandy's taking a break right now. She'll be right back and just say you can barely see her. Uh, okay. <laughs> She's over on the side, just taking care of herself. Y'all keep praying for y'all. It, it, things are getting better, but they ain't quite there yet. So we we appreciate her pushing through to just be a part of this big picture family here tonight. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go uh, back to this. Uh, so I'm gonna have to go to this one, Sandy. So just keep in mind that you're you're on the camera. Uh, hang on, hang on. All right, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm trying to get so you off. So I have trying, a question. I'm trying to get um, you off. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Um, I don't know. I had to unplug my ear, so I don't know if I'm still in the system. I can't hear myself. Yeah, yeah you're good. So I've been having a lot. If anybody out there has had a total knee replacement, I'm sure a lot of different things happen. So I'm four weeks post-op now and 
have new pains and different pains. And I just tell myself that my leg is waking up more. So yes. I'm over here squirming a little bit because yes. it's hard to stay in one position for this entire time. So that's why you may see me squirming around some. You're doing but, good. Um, doing good. You know, I don't know. I only know what my experience is. And, you know, my physical therapist, they can't answer every single question. But maybe if you've been through that, yeah. maybe after several weeks, that's what starts happening. You you get a little more uncomfortable. Give us some advice. Uncomfortable in different ways. But and thank you that's to all just the, where I am. And thank you to all the people that I'm seeing that did that and shared to Facebook and all that. Appreciate it. If we'll do that every week, we'll introduce ourselves in the Big Picture family to more people. Let me show you some I'm things that happen. To find my ears. Uh, let me show you. Just take your time. We uh, look. We this, <laughs> we, wa we watching how the sausage is made right now. <laughs> so they're, they're all good with it. Big picture family can handle oh, this. Oh, thank you guys. But look, the, this is this is what's happening in our country. This is what's happening around the world. This week, pro Palestinian agitators shut down the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, I mean, stop the world. The the world for Gaza mm -hmm. is what it's called. Stop the world for Gaza. On Monday, a small group of pro-Palestinian agitators holding a sign read and stopped the world for Gaza wreaked havoc on the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco to protest the United States funding of the ongoing war in the Middle East. The move was a part of, co of a coordinated campaign to destruct economies of major cities around the world. And of course, this is further pictures and video of it. Yeah. But according to ABC7, the group managed to shut down all southbound lanes, bringing traffic headed into San Francisco to a standstill. The disruption eventually led to the northbound lane being closed as well. And you both ways across the water closed down. <laughs> well, when I was... Uh... But it continues. Hang on. It okay. continues. In West Oakland, the same thing happened uh, uh, there. But I want to show you this other article. They they blocked the Chicago O'Hare Airport. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, to protest Boeing... And U.S. funding of war in Gaza. Mm. So it, it, <laughs> Boeing didn't need any more trouble right now. That's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> On Monday, a small group of pro-Palestinian agitators managed to shut down I-90 near the Chicago O'Hare International Airport, yeah. bringing traffic to a standstill, wow. frustrating hundreds of travelers. The airport had to put out uh, a statement saying, use alternate uh, modes of transportation to the airport, expect delays, uh, and, of course, it was eventually brought back online. But all around the world, that's just a couple of cities in America. Yeah. These protesters are showing up yes. in, in speeches of Republicans and Democrats. They're showing up in school, uh, school councils. They're showing up in city councils. It's like there's, there is no way, there is no way this many people— are pro-Palestinian. They are paid operatives. They are a part of an organ organization and an organized thing being put together to sow when, deceit and, con and, and confusion. You just went there, didn't you? I'm going to go there, Sandy. I'm just going to go there. My question to you was going to be, do you think if there was a group of people who had a different opinion um, would have gotten the same no. opportunity to shut the bridge down and to interfere at the airport. I watched a little bit of the video of the bridge. It looked like a large group of people running at one point. Um, I don't know what they were running for, but this is, you said the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah. Uh, I would imagine that's a pretty busy thoroughfare. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 20... Yeah. Yeah, and I, I want to know more about this because I've not seen it. A couple people tell me mm. the 26 barges that got loose down the Ohio River. I have had several people comment on that, okay. and I have not seen that. If somebody has an article I have not. that they can put in the comments, tell me where to go, I'll throw it up here live and read yes. it live and respond to it. I, have, I look and this for was it today. today or the weekend I don't or know. what? I don't know. Talk talk a little bit, babe. I'm going to say okay. I don't find it. Well, we definitely need to find that and look into that. I haven't heard anything about that. And uh, quite frankly, that sounds pretty crazy to me. You say 26 barges? Well, there it is. There it is right there. Look at the big picture, family. Okay. Let's just fire it right now. Break uh, loose on the flooded Ohio River, destroy Pittsburgh. 26 Marina. barges. Goodness. What? 26 barges no. broke loose on flooded Ohio River, destroy Pittsburgh Marina. Heavy rain 
triggered mm-hmm. flooding across the wow. Ohio River. Wow. Pittsburgh was on track to set. Oh, my goodness. So they're saying this is tied yes. to weather. But, boy, I tell you, there's a lot going on with barges. Yeah. Officials uh, <laughs> closed several bridges across the Pittsburgh late Friday night and mm-hmm. Saturday morning as more than two dozen cargo barges broke loose and careened down the flooded Did Ohio River. Did any of them have actual cargo on them? Look, or, oh, so that's cold. cold. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Now, that's a pretty good bit of weight. but not The 26 like- barges broke loose around 1125 in the flooding rains, blah, blah, blah. The rest were loaded with dry cargo like coal, said some of them, uh, let's see, but look where they're lodged up against the bridge. Are. They are. Up against the bridge. Lord have mercy. And it says this river is expected to flood towns again for the second wow, time. Wow, wow. So look, we just, y'all breaking news for us right here. Wow, thanks. Let's get, let's, let's get back thanks, to Israel guys. real quick. That was an amazing thing, and I'm going to mm-hmm. look more into that. Yeah. But uh, staying on the whole thing that's happening with these protests, look what's happening in Michigan. Michigan is basically turned into a mini Iran. And I'm not being critical here no. because there's some good people that come from no. every country. But anti-Israel protesters chant, chant in, in Michigan, death to America, death to Israel in Michigan. Let's see if we can play this. Wow. Well, we're going to watch a commercial. Just hang on while I go through the commercial. <laughs> well, but while you're getting to that, um, they've been hearing the prayers ring out five times a day. Mm-hmm. For years, right? Because yeah, the population yeah. has been growing and growing. And, you know, they don't, they're not going to assimilate. They're not going to stop having their prayers five times a day. Right. They're not going to stop what they do. It's only going to grow. And the resolve is only going to grow stronger when they disagree with you or they have an opinion on something. They're going to be sharing it. Right, right. Keep talking. When you say okay. me and Justin, I need you to okay. keep talking. Okay. So um, I don't know how many of you knew that, that that population had been growing for years and years. And it's probably kind of like it is in London where there's such a large Muslim population there. Yes. And, you know, of course, when they see that there's a safe place for them to yes. dwell, you know, they are um, not only they're going to bring family members over from other places, but they're going to be having more and more and more children. Yep. Um, they even oh, have. That reminds me. Have you seen the video where the guy, the guy openly from Michigan, openly says that he goes, he goes, look, we're going to be a majority yes. in 2016. He goes, we're having children over here. Yes. You're not having children anymore. None of your people are having children. We're having a bunch of babies. It ain't going to be long. We're going to be the majority, and and Sharia law is going to be the law here in America. Yes. He openly said that. Oh, they've been saying that for years, and they have like a— And he told the truth. —a thousand-year plan to take over. All right, let's watch this video. Okay. So I had to wait through those two stupid ads. Now we can watch it. But these are—this is in Michigan, in the United States of America. Yeah. Malcolm X said, and I quote, we live in one of the rottenest countries that that has ever existed on this earth. It's not genocide Joe that has to go. It's the entire system that has to go. Any system that would allow such atrocities and such devilry to to happen and would support it, such a system does not deserve to exist on God's earth. Wow. Wow. That's it. Oh, hang on. <laughs> what is that? I yeah. hate those kind of websites. You need to get your EMP shield, though. I'm just saying. Good Lord. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Um. Okay, so voices. This is in our country. Yeah, and voices like this are only going to get louder and louder, okay? They're empowered to stand up and say the quiet thing out loud. Yeah, they are. And, and not only are they empowered to say the quiet thing out loud from internally from within them because their mm-hmm. religion is telling them to do yeah. that, sure. we are empowering them to do it. We are we are creating laws where no one is prosecuted. Things that used to be a, just common sense to be illegal are no longer legal anymore. We have an open border that is being invaded and flooded by countries all over the world, and many of them enemies of the of this nation. Then we have these squatters that are just coming in and taking over people's houses. They're taking over businesses. 
They're smashing and grabbing yeah. because these cities are doing away with with prosecuting robbery cer- tourism. Robbery yeah. tourism. It's creating. I'm telling you, I know on this show, some of y'all think all you ever do is talk about movies. We don't even actually really watch a lot of movies, but no. but but we know what happens in these movies. Mm-hmm. These movies, these dystopian worlds yeah. that we have seen in these shows over and over again, all of our lives, the future, how it's going to look. I'm telling you, man, that is the real world for them, these elites. Yeah. That is what they're trying to take us to. They're trying to take us to, and we're going we're gonna to do a quick review of the movie Civil War in just a few moments that we went to see. Yeah. But we talk a lot about that, that Obama show movie, mm-hmm. Leave the World Behind. Sure. I'm telling you, that's, what, that's becoming one of the most prophetic movies that we've ever seen. If you And look, we don't endorse it, a lot of bad language in it. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling you, we are living in the beginning stages of that movie. Well, a phrase comes to my mind, and it really breaks my heart. Um, but this country, our country that we live in and love, it is being set up to be ripe for the taking. Yes. And um, I don't see how anybody can deny that. When we've allowed so many people into the country, we don't know who they are. We don't know where they are, but we know there are multiplied, probably at least in the hundreds of thousands, possibly in the millions yes. of young men. Absolutely. God forbid that they all are here yes. to assemble to attack. Yes. And we just had uh, Ricky, uh, in Time mm-hmm. Headlines, jump in. Great. Which is a great segue for me. I didn't know he was going to be in here okay. to let y'all know that Ricky is normally the second Thursday of the month, but this particular month, some things happened. We couldn't get him on there last Thursday. So that means he's going to be with us tomorrow Yay. night. Tomorrow night. Yes. Special treat. And Woo. hey, seven o'clock tomorrow look, night, Ricky Scaparo. Look at the timing. Yeah, exactly. Look I, at the time. I think it actually in. worked out. God, it actually God worked it out. It worked out amazing. We need him to come and yes. offer commentary. And God forbid anything happens between now and uh, tomorrow, whenever the show is. Yes. But if it does, you know, yes. he will have a lot to say, and we will be very appreciative of that. So, so. Ricky will be with us tomorrow night at nice. seven o'clock, seven o'clock Central Time, right here on the Big Picture Kingdom Intelligence Report. You got a two for this week. You got. Tuesday night, Ricky Scaparo. Thursday night, Standeo. Man, what a week this is going to be. How long till we're coming to you five nights? Hush, JK. Hush, hush. Just kidding. Oh, Lord, you're killing me. <laughs> Just I'm, kidding. I'm barely, I'm barely, I'm like a zombie right now. <laughs> But, uh, oh, by the way, let me just jump in here and just say thank you to our partners right now. You are a blessing. Yes. More and more of you becoming partners awesome. each and every week. You're going to our website, becoming a monthly partner. We found out this week, Sandy, we're going to show you extensively in a, f- mm-hmm. in a few mo- moments as we get further in the night that we're shooting for a May 1st broadcast day on Faith TV all around the world. Our television program is going live. It's already, we're already on the Faith Now app with our church, but our TV show is coming back and is coming nice. back to Faith TV. If everything goes right, May 1st exactly. or sometime in May. So you guys be praying about our new TV show and what you can do to possibly help us because yes. um, we're going to be moving into a crunch time right. of building a whole new studio and revamping a lot of things. We're going to yep. need equipment. We need some help. So if yep. you can we help us out it. financially in any way, we will appreciate any gift of any More than amount. anything, we need your prayers yes, and we, we appreciate your prayers more than anything. Now, <clears throat> the question is, will the retaliation that Israel is going to do to Iran unlock, leash, uh, turn into a global war, otherwise known as World War III. Right. It's it's a term that's thrown around all the time. Is. is this the World War III? In fact, I even debated on even putting it on the thumbnail because I, I told her, I was like, it's such an overused term it is. that it's almost like the boy that cried wolf. Everybody's it, Everything's World War III until nothing's World War III, and then World War III actually happens and nobody believes it's here. I believe we're at a boy that cried wolf moment. I really do believe that we are at the precipice. I mean, maybe even already in it, World War III. I believe World War III actually began in the cyber world, and I believe Mm -hmm. it's been going on for a while, and it's been in preparation for the actual military part of it. 
I don't think a lot of people thought that the trigger was going to be Israel. I know those that follow Bible prophecy know that's where it would eventually go. But I think a lot of people thought China was going to go into Taiwan and then with Russia, what they're doing in Ukraine, and then maybe the Middle East might be involved. But I think most people thought that China was going to be the, the force. But I think what's coming, what's happening, and what's being revealed before our eyes is that Putin and Jinping is also going to be heavily involved very quickly in mm-hmm. those two things I just mentioned. But they're right. going to take advantage of what is happening in the Middle East to trigger it. And, and what is a world war? It's war on multiple continents sure. at the same time. Well, okay, so different approach for sure. Look what China has quietly been doing surrounding Taiwan. Yeah. Right? Right. Sending who knows how many people into our country, yep. crossing our borders, probably part of some kind of sleeper cell. Yep. Um, they're colonizing Yep. Many parts of the world, and we've talked about this yep. multiple times, they're in China. They're yep. reviving the old Silk Road. They want to bring back the old 5,000-year-old empire. Yep. They've made Xi emperor. Right. I God. Mean, they've made him God. <laughs> so, they're, make, they're making their own Bible right now. I don't know if you knew that. They've got yeah. their own Bible translation that makes him God in the translation. So, Yeah. Um, I t- can totally agree with your theory of a different approach. Well, let's look at this article here. Um, let's see where I'm at. When I change up, when you slide out, I mess. I, I can't find out where I was. There we go. There we are. All right. Sorry. So, uh, Xi Xi Jinping. Mm-hmm. That was good, babe. Thank you. Did that, I get it right? That was the best you ever said his Xi name. And I'm not saying it was completely correct, but that sounded good to me. I was impressed well, with that. Thank you so much, mm-hmm. baby. Yeah. Xi Jinping launched this week in a, and just recently the quote should return operation to take over Taiwan. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Think of the timing here, what we're talking about right now. Uh I'm not even going to attempt to say, I won't try. Okay, I'm going to try it. Ma Yingju. Hmm. Ma Yingju. Pretty good to me. Former president of Taiwan and former chairman of Taiwan's oh, main yeah. opposition. You get that one right there. Uh, Kuomintang? Kuomintang. <laughs> or KMT. I would call him KMT. <laughs> okay, yeah. He's got, he, he's, he's got initials. Is leading a delegation of students from Taiwan to the Chinese mainland from April 1st to 11th, raising hopes that compatriots on both sides of the Taiwan Strait uh, will jointly promote cross-strait exchanges and cooperation in various sectors and help realize the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation, according to CCP's Central Propaganda Department. On mm-hmm. April 10th, Xi Jinping met Ma in Beijing and emphasized the determination of reunification. Hmm. There are no knots that cannot be untied, no issues that cannot be discussed, and no force that can separate us. Wow. So he goes on to say that during the meeting, uh, he intentionally called Xi general secretary in the speech. To note, general secretary of CCP has significant political meaning in CCP's, to CCP's officials. As shown in the records of Xi's classified meetings with his most trustworthy CCP officials, including PLA generals, ministers in the government, and secretaries of the provincial party committee, all of the officials call Xi general secretary rather than president or chairman. So what's happening is there is a setup beginning. Wow. They are the the narrative in mm-hmm. China. Yeah. They're trying to control the narrative in Taiwan has begun. Yeah. They have already been circling the island. We've covered here that they annex the China Sea yes. on the other side of Taiwan. Right. And by the way, let's not forget a massive earthquake happened on the backside of Taiwan just a couple of weeks ago that triggered tsunami warnings in Japan. Yep. They are getting ready for something. We have said on this program since June of last year that U.S. military officials 
have said they are preparing to go to war, the United States, with China in 2024. So here we are now. We're in the air taking down Iranian missiles who are closely aligned with China, closely aligned with Russia. And China has said that all along they have been waiting for the election cycle to kick in, for there to be chaos in the streets of America, for us to lose our focus on anything else other than Orange Man and uh, mm-hmm. Sleep Man, Sleepy Joe and, and Orange Man, and you know, call each other what, whatever. Right. And then that's when they're going to take Taiwan. I sure. believe there is going to be an escalation of global wars that's about to happen in this year. I hope I'm wrong, but I believe that's what's coming. And you would thank th- you for that super sticker, oh, Tiffany Woolery. Nice. Hi, Tiffany. Love you, Tiffany. Good to see you. Um, you would think that it is absolutely a foregone conclusion that China has to take Taiwan because there are certain things that are produced on that island, like the chips. Yep. The computer chips, and that's not something that they can let go of they have to have control of those they have to have access to those so um i would say that it may have been tough it may have been a real struggle to have had an all out attack against taiwan taiwan before now but they're doing the long game yes they are if we can kind of you know just surround the island and get them at our mercy that's a lot uh, cleaner and, and and neater way to get control of things. Um, I don't know how much in the way of food and other types of supplies have to be brought from China to Taiwan, but they probably depend on <coughs> certain things coming yeah. from the mainland. Yeah. And if those are shut down and the island is yeah. surrounded, they're isolated. They're going to feel that. And Absolutely. I don't know what length or matter of time. But, and, and, but remember, America has said if they attack you, we'll, we'll protect you. Sure. Now, is America really going to do that? <laughs> that was a little a minute ago, so I don't yeah, know if that yeah. still things stands. Have, things have changed a little bit since then. <laughs> a lot of things have changed in a yeah. short amount of time, so maybe that's one of them. Maybe not. Well, the time has come, Sandy, for uh, us to review okay. the blockbuster. So as Civil we get War. ready to get in to our commentary, please chime in if you yeah. uh, were able to see this movie, Civil War, yeah. over the week. So weekend. we have talked about this movie since we first saw the trailer. Right. And we talked about it almost as part two of Leave the World Behind. Mm. The trailer was very um, mm. spicy. Was. The trailer made you think that uh, certain things. Well, Do let, you think it was deceptive? I think the trailer was very deceptive. Now, I wanted you to know, if you've not seen it. We won't give just, the whole thing away. I'm but- going to give it away. Okay. I'm, go- I'm doing spoiler alert right now. Um, I'm just strike, telling you right now. Strike that from yeah. the record. We are giving it away. Yeah, we're going to give it away. We're, uh, we're going to do a full review on it so real quick. Let I, me but, say okay. one thing. Okay. So it reminded me, for those of you who watched the Walking Dead series, Okay. and as you know— Whoa, what a super chat. Thank you, Julie. I'm like, what? What? Wow. Julie, you are amazing. That's amazing. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. That's going to be a head start on our new studio right there. Yes. So it, those of you who followed The Walking Dead, you know when the series began, it, it was not revealed what had happened, what had taken place yeah. to create the current environment that everyone was living in. This movie. Hey, by the way, I said I'm going to give it all away, but several people are saying that they haven't seen it. Okay. So we're going to sort of walk Good. that way. I think We are that, going to give away some spoilers, but not everything. I think that you should not give it all away. So uh, to me, this movie started the same way. You, yeah. are, you are right in the middle of a serious situation, yep. but not a lot of dialogue has been. Right. There's not a lot of ground. Really, there's no ground laid. To you, tell you, don't. you exactly what okay, brought Alicia. Okay, to this Alicia. point. We won't spoil it, Alicia. <laughs> Somebody's saying spoil it. And right, Alicia says don't spoil it. And then Crystal says spoil it. <laughs> Everybody, we got 50-50. We so got to divide it I up. just wanted to set that up to let you know when the movie starts, you're already you, into the yeah, thick you of have, it. You have no idea what started Don't it. understand how okay. you got there. All right, so look, I'm just going to say it this way. I I didn't think it was a great movie. It was okay, 
and I can't stand the F word, and it was a lot of F words, okay? And by the way, first of all, also, this has nothing to do with the movie, but this was the first movie that I've ever gone to see. Some of you may have seen it. We don't go see a lot of movies. And I only went there for research purposes, to be honest with you. That's the only reason we saw this movie. Was, But this is the first time I ever saw a trailer in a movie theater with the F word in a trailer. And I realized then, man, we have really took a, we already were bad, but we just took a bad, you can't even show a trailer before a movie Mm -mm. without the F word. And I couldn't believe it. It was, it was in a trailer, but let me just say this about the movie. As you said, we'll try to walk the line here. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is all I'm going to say. The movie is nothing like the trailer makes you think it is. I it, don't know if I agree with that. What, do, what is it? Why you say that? Because I didn't think it was. Um, so those of you who've seen the trailer, you know you're going to see something very dramatic, and then quite frankly, it's probably going to upset you. And I will tell you that I definitely cried at uh, one oh, it point. Was horrible. I cried. Uh, I mean, closer to the yeah. end of the movie and yeah. it wasn't about the ending but it was about a specific scene and dramatic moment to me and I'm just going to go ahead and say this um, they were in Washington D.C. and a major monument was destroyed yeah, was or at least heavily see. heavily damaged and when that happened I just immediately began to cry and I said to myself wow this grand experiment is really over. It's yeah. really come to an end. Even though everything in the movie would have already said that to you, you would have probably already come to that conclusion. I mean, forces are in the Capitol at this point, but you know where this is going. Yeah. But that imagery, that sealed the deal for well, me. Well, you understand what Civil War means. Civil War means Americans fighting Americans. And when you see Americans just, just but killing what I'm each saying other like is crazy. that. It looks like the whole thing, meaning our country, really is going to fall. Like this really is the end. And to me, it's it's just it's a little morbid too, and not little. It's a lot morbid. It is, and and it was it was a difficult movie to get through. Mm. And I'm seeing so many people saying they're not going to go see it. They want to go see it. I I get it, Um, but I would say that if you want to go see the movie, just be prepared that um, you know there's going to be a lot of. Violence. There's going to be some some pretty gory scenes. Sure. Uh, nothing like a slasher movie, but there will be a lot of guns involved and death. Mm-hmm. And there is, uh, like you said, you to see sacred things. Just, I mean, they're just. It's a, it's a whole nother world. But you know what? I thought. Well, let's this say- is what the world looks like without God. This is a godless Certainly. nation. This is where a godless it will nation bring will end up. To your mind of watching. The news of of reporters and photojournalists that are embedded in other countries yeah. when war and civil war is going on. Yeah. But this movie is about watching what's happening through the eyes, through the lens of, of photojournalists. The, of the press. Yeah, yeah. They are photojournalists, yeah. and they're out there. That's what it's really about. To capture, they're yeah. capturing what is going on. Yeah. Um, and. It's so so I so what I'm trying to say is I thought and I hope this don't spoil it for those who want to go see it. I thought it was going to be a movie that was all about the characters of on both sides of a civil war. It's not mm-hmm. about that. It's the journey of these journalists trying to make it across and and as they go across the country where they're going. Right. Of course, I think even in the trailer this is not a spoiler. They're on their way to Washington and on their way to Washington for the culmination, the final battle scene and all of that. They're documenting the horrible things that you see in a civil war. Yes. When you have the Western Front, which is a conglomerate of states, then you have the California and Texas coalition, which is weird. Why couldn't you tell us how in the world Texas and California got together, but they don't? Then there's the Florida Alliance. And then there is the, I forgot what the other one's called, that was was pro-Washington. But uh, it is, it is, I'll say this, uh, cinematically, it was a great movie. Uh, music, had good music. The sound was amazing. It was a amazing looking movie, but I felt like it was, boy, it was just like you did not, 
you come away just thinking, well, I want to what piggyback. is this where we're going? I'll piggyback on what you said. You called it part two of Leave the World Behind, and I will agree with that. And um, for those of you who can can stomach some things, you should go and see it because I think that collectively we need to get our hearts and minds at a place of of readiness for what I, I'm not sure, but we no longer we don't get to sit on the sidelines yeah. and mute the world and right. pretend all these things are not going on and be so distracted by everything that you can imagine that you don't understand. There and, is and a I, strong undertone, yeah. a war drum that is getting louder and louder, and this is a literal war drum. And I, I will say this too, and then we're going to move on because we're going to take too much time on this. All right. Uh, I'm not even going to show the article that I was going to show because there's a lot of spoilers in the article. I'm not going to do that, but I will spoil one thing for you. And it's, and it's only my opinion, but I believe that it's, you know, I think most people think this anyway. I came away with thinking emphatically that it is at least implied. The president of the United States is Donald Trump. I felt like they were trying to tell you, this is where your world is going. If you elect this man. I felt strongly about that. Now, all the other stuff that I thought going in that I was going to see that I didn't see, that one thing I thought I was going to see, I think I felt like that was very emphatic. Deceptive? I don't think it was deceptive. I'm thinking I'm thinking that was the one that was that was the part that I don't think they tried to hide that they were trying to tell okay. you subliminally this it, this will be the world that you get if you if you elect this man. I think that, I do uh, believe that. I think there's a good possibility um, the way you feel. Yeah, sure. And it's totally up to you. We're not going to tell you not to see it. Go see no. it or whatever. Uh, I've seen a lot of bad movies that people told me they were bad movies. Mm-hmm. I went to see them on my own. And I and I, and a lot of times people will go tell me it's a horrible movie, and I go see it, and I and I loved it. So you may go see it and love it. So I, I'm not putting this in the good movie column. No. The the cinematography was compelling on certain points. But I felt like, for me, it was a movie I needed to see. I knew it would be a little tough, and it was. Yeah. But um, it, it actually helped me to try to get my mindset where it probably needs to be in yeah. being more cautious yep. um, of hopefully what's not coming, but yep. it might be. If you haven't smashed that like button, go ahead and smash it now. Smash it, smash it, smash it. If you're watching this on Rumble, hit that like button as well. Uh, so we're going to move on from that. If mm-hmm. you go, if you do go see it, let me know. A lot of you have already told me that you hated the movie. Some of you thought it was interesting, yeah. but the majority of people are saying they did not like the movie, but now you go see it. You tell, if you go see it yourself and you choose to do that, let us know what you thought. Please. You may think it's great. Now, now look, we, we, we a little lighthearted on that. We got to get back to some serious stuff. And this yes. is, this is, boy, this is heartbreaking. This is what's happening in Australia, Australia, boy, we've got a lot of people watch us from Australia, and our mm-hmm. hearts are going out to you. Absolutely. Uh, there was a mall stabbing. There was a Sydney church stabbing. Uh, how many was killed in this mall stabbing? Uh, I think I saw six killed mm. and multiple injured. Okay. So this this is an, this was right here, and I just want to give you a warning. I am going to play. Uh, they don't show blood, but I am going to play the video. So I'm just giving you a heads-up warning. <laughs> But that I want you to see it. Were these on two? Was one on Australia, one New Zealand, or were they New both? Zealand? Yeah, it was New Zealand. You're so right. So Sydney yeah. is Australia. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, the other one was New Zealand. So the Sydney church stabbing suspect is a 15 year old boy. Police confirm. Eyewitness video. This they've got this one blurred. Uh, the suspect arrested after a bishop and worshippers were attacked in a church in Sydney is a 15 year old boy. It has been confirmed. The attack just after 7 p.m. local time on Monday at the Christ the Good Shepherd Church in Wakeley was captured on camera as mass was being live streamed. Footage shows the moment a suspect walked into the altar and attacked Bishop Mari, Mar Mari Emmanuel. Many of you know him. He's very well known online as he was saying mass. In the video, uh, they said, which they have not chosen to publish in full because of how graphic it is, the knifeman can be seen stabbing the victim his, in multiple times until the bishop falls to the ground. Screams of horror can be heard in the background in the moments of the attack. Police have since confirmed the suspect is 15-year-old who was arrested at the scene. Now, now this is the image of when he's preaching and he's doing, he's about to 
whatever part of mass he's about to do. And the, the young guy just gets up and walks towards there. And uh, I don't think I have the video. Maybe, maybe I do. I'm not sure. I hope you don't. Uh, but let's just see if this plays. Oh, my goodness. Look, some things you need to see. And if you want to look away, you can. It's very quick. <laughs> I say they, thankfully, they cut it out. And but you know, he goes he goes straight for, for his side of his face and his neck. And several other church members were stabbed as well. And what I've been saying, and I've been telling my church as well, I hope and pray it never comes to our house of worship. But the reality is this, as we get closer to the end and as the agenda begins to, to really turn into turbo speed, there's a rise of evil that is happening, yeah. and they are coming after the church. And this has happened. This is this is one instance. There are church shootings and stabbings and threatenings, oh, yeah. bomb threats and all this are happening on churches all around the world. Is this part of what you think Rust is Star called the awakening where a lot some of these people have been programmed through um, trauma. They have split their personalities. They have associative uh, disorder. And some of these different personalities can be trained to be killers, to attack, to, you know, do all these sorts of things. But whether it's anything that he talked about or not, there's persecution coming to the church. No doubt about it. And it's getting crazy. And these people, they don't have access to guns, but they they sure don't mind uh, pulling knives and those kinds of weapons out and attacking. Yeah. Um, and it talks about, um, let me go, let me go right here. It says, uh, this comes less than 48 hours after the massacre in Westfield Bondi Junction on Saturday afternoon where six people were stabbed to death and one victim, Ashley Good, died protecting her goodness, baby. So what I want to say is, without getting too morbid on the show tonight, is everybody talks about guns. Yep. But here's the reality. Guns do not kill people. People kill people. And if you take away the guns, if somebody's de demonically possessed yeah. and ready to take somebody else's life, they'll use a knife. Yeah. And if you take away the knife, they'll use something else. So it's a matter of the heart. We it's a it's a heart issue. It's not a it's not a weapon issue. And you can debate all day long whether there should be regulations on weapons and so forth. But what really is needed is somebody's got to find a way to reach these kids and to reach these generations to tell them that life matters. There's just yes. no respect for life anymore. Certainly. My goodness, we see it right here where we live. Three domestic violence deaths in right. Birmingham Metro in one week. I think it was actually less than a week. Yeah. Um, this is Birmingham. We're in the belt, the Bible belt buckle. Children injured and killed in the crossfire. And it's a decently frequent thing around here. And, um, yeah. man, it's just crazy. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you something else is crazy that everybody's been messaging uh, me today, yeah. wanting me to comment on, wanting me to make a show <laughs> on it, and I didn't have time. I just said, well, I'll just talk about it tonight. Why not? Well, have y'all heard about Mark Driscoll? Mm. <laughs> I mean, if you've been on YouTube, you heard about Mark Driscoll. I mean, everybody that's <laughs> anybody that's ever done been done a YouTube video is trying to take advantage of it. And it's it's really it's to me it's sad that first of all, the whole thing was sad, but it was sad it's sad how many people are just trying to use this situation for clicks and yeah. and all this kind of stuff. Everybody's jumping on it. I just I almost did it and I just said, you know what? I'm just not gonna do it. I'm not gonna make a separate show on this. But I do wanna cover it. Uh Mark Driscoll. Now, a lot of you have know who Mark Driscoll is. Some of you may not even know who he is. For those that know who he is and followed him for years, know he's a very controversial figure, preacher. He's gone through a lot of things, and a lot of people don't like him. Okay, I get it. Some people love him. I didn't used to care that much for the preaching of Mark Driscoll, but I've, I've actually begun to listen to some of his stuff, and I like what he says. I'll say one thing. He's, he's bold. And watch this. <laughs> Mark Driscoll this week got tossed out – tossed off the stage at a men's conference yeah. after calling out the conference for hiring 
This is a men's conference. Mm. A male pole dancer to open the conference. <laughs> I can't even believe I'm reading this. <laughs> I can't even believe that I'm reading this. Is this what the church has come to? All right. Everything about this story is weird. And if anything, it's served. This is, by the way, this is not the bee. This is owned by Babylon the bee. They have a separate site called Not the Bee, which is actual not satire. It serves to show how many American choice churches have become actual circus shows devo- devoid of sound teaching and common sense. So here, here, here we go. <laughs> I like, I like this, by the way, Kyle Mann, if y'all don't know who Kyle Mann is, Kyle Mann is the owner and founder of the Babylon Bee. And he says, he says, Mark Driscoll calls out a male stripper at a men's conference is one of those headlines that makes me think we'll be out of a job at the Babylon Bee soon. <laughs> no words, what he's saying is the things that we make up, they're becoming actual things and we're not going to be able to make up anything anymore because no, they're all already happened. What is that phrase, art? Uh, it's become reality. <laughs> dictating life. Or yeah. life. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Sorry, Babylon B bros, but re- reality is crazier than satire now. And just to sum it up, Mark Driscoll, megachurch pastor, you know, many of those know he fell from grace and he's been uh, restored and uh, many people you know follow him now. But Driscoll has been resuming pastoring at a new church that he founded in Arizona. He pops up from time to time on the radar from occasional, occasional firebrand moments. Okay, so I like what they say here. Driscoll is like Alex Jones figure in the mega church evangelistic world. Which, by the way, just an interesting note here. When you go, don't read the comments if you go watch the confessional episode where I'm on it. Because like 90% of them are calling me an idiot. And they're saying that I look like Alex Jones and that I am Alex Jones Jr. So I guess I do sort of look like Alex Jones, but I'm not Alex Jones. So now watch this. Look, this is an article that the Babylon Bee owner, not to be, pulled up about this guy. I'm not trying. There's. I'm not saying that he's not saved now, whatever. But the article is about the guy on the pole here it's, it, that performed on um, some like Britain's Got Talent or something. It says mm-hmm. how a dirt poor uh, bad boy from sleepy Moldovan town became a seedy Vegas stripper. Moldovan. Moldovan town before vi- <clears throat> wowing millions as BGT's daredevil sword swallower. So here is the video. I just want to show you if you've not seen the video. Here is the video. I've seen some small clips from it. I haven't seen. All right. What I want you to see at the beginning of this screenshot here, he has his shirt off. He is standing before a pole, and he has a sword but in his up, mouth. He shows up with his shirt he on. He shows up with his shirt removes on. Removes his shirt. Takes his shirt off. A little weird. <laughs> which was a little weird at a men's conference. At this, a men's conference. <laughs> and he has a sword in his belly. Sticking out of his mouth right now. He's a sword swallower. He's going to climb this pole with the sword in his mouth. And so he's going to do all these acrobatical things, okay? Which is crazy. All right. So that's why the church is spinning it, is that they were hiring a you know just a great gymnastic person this is the moment that happened with Mark Driscoll okay mm-hmm. by the way what that d- clip did not show you is he does get on the pole and start spinning around the pole like a stripper it's going to tell like it is it really was he hung upside down in fact i know he probably didn't intend to do this i don't think he intended to do this but at one point, his legs are wrapped around the pole, and he's hung upside down, and he puts both his arms down, and it looks just like he's crucified upside down. And people have screenshotted that. Mm-hmm. But as Sandy said, he started out the show with his shirt on. Yeah. I don't know why in the world you think that even if you're there to do this gymnastic <laughs> thing, that you got to rip your shirt off or take your shirt off in front of a bunch of men. But here we go. But let me do this. Um, oh. I've been up since 1 o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you, and my heart is very burdened for you. There it is. That's what I'm talking about. And I want to be very careful with this, and it's not what I want to say, but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Mm. Before the word of God was open, 
There was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an ashtray. Mm. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't know. So, so here's where it happens. Yeah. So at this point, and I, and I can only imagine what the pastor's going through. I'm a pastor. He's sitting on the front row, and he realizes that a guy that he's asked to come speak at his conference yeah. is calling out the conference. Okay, <laughs> yeah. He's calling out the whole conference. And the pastor. And the pastor and all of that. So I get it from that point, but I don't get how in the world they thought that was a good idea. But this is what happens at this point. He begins to illustrate, and you could just, as you hear the pastor, the pastor will yell out. You'll hear it in the background, you're out of line, Mark. Mm -hmm. And then he stops, and he, he sees the pastor saying that to him, and he says, you're done. We're done. And he submits it, puts his hat on, and walks mm -hmm. off the stage. And this is this is just a a chilling moment in the church. And I, you can interpret it any way you want to, but this this kind of stuff— is the kind of stuff that's going to be exposed the further and further we get closer right. to the end times. Now watch this. And then he swallowed a sword and Jesus cried. Okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. Wow. Pastor is saying this. you're done. Now watch this. Listen to the man. Crowd erupts. This is a church. This is a men's conference. Mm -hmm. This is the past. Someone screaming, get off the platform. Yeah. get a timeline he says he had 30 minutes so no nobody knows that yeah i know what you're okay. about to ask no yeah. nobody knows that he so says i talked to him 30 minutes right i don't think that meant that they sat around and talked 30 minutes during that service he's sitting on the front row and during 30 minutes i'm just curious did this <sighs> we don't know when this was at the beginning of this service okay. or at the beginning of how, the conference how long it was that we don't the know. performance took place before Mark Driscoll took the stage is, you know, I, I don't know. I'm sure a lot of us but have his that words question. Was, his words was, we kicked the conference off with this. Yes. So a lot of people are voicing their support. I would say from what I've seen, 95 to 98 percent is in support of Mark. Many people saying, I don't even like Mark Driscoll. I don't mm -hmm. support his ministry, but mm -hmm. I admire what he did. And I want to say this one thing. They're going yeah. to move on. Yeah. From a pastor's point of view, I can understand this guy trying to get up on that stage and trying to ex somehow bring this conference back. But the reality is this, what I'm what I'm praying is that this pastor needs to understand what he did was he made a very bad decision and he and I'll be honest with you, I don't know how you spin it. I don't, I don't even I'm here's where I'm at without being judgmental. Yeah. Even if this guy was there because he was a male stripper and now he's got saved and he's there because he's a man of God. The way it looked, ripping off the shirt, all that, I'm sorry. Is this a circus or is this a church well, service? And we have sure. entertained for so sure. long that we have lost simply the presence of God in the world. Oh, of we're God. okay. I want to say two things. 
we've completely left the arena of smoke and lights yeah. that get a lot of criticism in the church during praise and worship. We're in a whole other realm that I really didn't realize we could get into um, with this performance by him. But my other thing that I would say is this. I don't follow and I don't know Mark Driscoll's ministry, but I understand people have different feelings about him. But I could see from his point of view, being a man of God there to deliver a word after you witness this, yeah. yes, I, agree. I could see in his mind, I've got a choice. Yep. I'm I can either just yep. get up and try to grace as graciously as I can yep. walk out of here yep. and get out of this, or I can say something about it and let the chips fall. He probably didn't think this is what I, don't I call, know what he thought. I'm but. telling you, I I don't know this because nobody knows this, but I feel like I would have probably felt to do the same thing, and and that's yeah. a no comeback sermon. That's a that's a there's no telling the kind of turmoil he was going through or, in his mind. Or your calendar starts filling up with invitations. Well, it will, but I'm talking about to, <laughs> the, yeah. to this house, yes, yes, to yes, this yes. house, and to this pastor, and to this church. But look, if you're going to be true to yourself yeah. and, and your ministry and I your relationship with God, Took I could see him making a decision. I have to get out of here as quickly as possible, or I'm going to just hit this head on because but see, I am not doing this. It's one thing to be a watchman on a show like this when it's just me and you and a camera. It's yeah. another thing sure. to call out sin and to call out, sure. not maybe not sin, but perversion, weirdness, demonic portals, well, opening, look. whatever, in the presence of the play. And did you hear when he started talking about it, yeah. the men started clapping. Yes, they did. They were like, hey— we're glad somebody's saying what we were thinking, Hello. too. They were like that. I and was thinking, okay, if you're a man in that audience struggling with homosexuality, seeing a, a man get up on a stage and take his shirt off and start having a performance is probably one of the last things that you need to see <laughs> yeah. in a church service or anywhere else, for that matter. Yep. But but you know where you're not going to see anything like that, Sandy? Mm-mm. On Faith TV. Come on. Woo, which is where we're going. Woo. Yes. The Big Picture television program is going to Faith TV. Let me show you real quick. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. Just a couple of seconds here. If you go to myfaith.tv, and I'll link it down below. It's not there yet. But you'll see there's Faith USA. There's Faith United Kingdom. There's Faith Africa. And then, of course, they are on every app, yeah. every TV app, if you have Roku, Amazon, uh, Fire TV, Android TV, Apple TV, iPhone, Android phone, whatever you use to watch TV, and if you have Direct TV, we are on Direct TV as well. And we're going to begin the big picture television program, 30-minute program, uh, once a week, beginning yeah. in the month of May and we're excited, and we're thankful so for all the people that are partners with yes. us. Let's get back into the news. Uh, we had talked about the economy tonight, but we're seeing horrible things coming on the rise in the economy. Credit card delinquencies have now reached the worst ever rate in history. I can believe it. According to the Federal Reserve. At the same time, buy now, pay later apps have continued to explode in popularity. U.S. credit delinquency rates were the highest on record in the fourth quarter, delinquency, that means late on payments. Sure. Uh, almost 3.5% of card balances were at least 30 days past due oh as of the end of December. The, Phil the Philadelphia Fed said that's the highest figure in the <clears throat> data series going back to 2012 and up by about 30 basis points from the previous quarter. My goodness. 30 basis points. The share of debts that are 60 and 90 days late also climbed. Yeah. Stress among cardholders are further underscored in payment behavior as the share of accounts making minimum payments rose 34 basis points to also a serious high. Do you understand credit card debt? You make the minimum payments. That means you never, sure. ever pay it off. It's impossible in your lifetime to do it. So when you start seeing people putting their – Credit cards, balances, that means that they're buying groceries on credit cards. That means they're yes. trying to pay their bills on credit cards. And then it gets out of hand quickly. And then they get behind. Yeah. And then their credit is ruined. Then they're 
their whole life is ruined. And that is the sign of an economy. And, and at the same time, inflation rose again. Yeah. So so I'm telling you, this but is a bad time. Some of these credit card rates are approaching 30%. That's I mean, insane. This is insane. We've gone from, you know, maybe in the lower double digits to approaching 20 and now approaching 30% for some of these. This is um, – can you imagine carrying a balance on – more than one of these cards. Mm. Look at this. It says uh, it says that the issuers have responded by lowering the credit limit for new accounts. Sure. The average account opened with a three thousand dollar limit in the fourth quarter, down from three thousand three hundred sixty eight dollars in the second quarter. So what it's basically saying is not only are people not paying their bills, they are all becoming credit risks. So the credit card companies are sure. lowering how much money people can get because credit cards are being – it's just a horrible, horrible thing for people to get in that cycle because then they go to payday loan places and they, they, it's just oh, title yes. loan That's places. That's a vicious, vicious it's a cycle. vicious, vicious cycle. If you're in that, we're praying that you'll come out of that yeah, as soon as possible. Yeah, we pray that God will make a way because um, we've been there yep. when you've got one or more very high credit card balances and – You've used these to, you know, take care of a problem or, you know, do something to your home that you really needed to do. And every month when you're making those payments, for me, I just felt so defeated. It felt like, when yes. will we ever yep. be able to get out of this cycle? This this is some sort of abuse. It feels like highway robbery. It does. Um, it does. It's sickening, and I understand that some people have to they do what they got to do. Sure. But we got to pray, God, that you, they'll get you out of that. God will help make a way, right? So while all this is going on, leading food companies are and restaurants are now increasing their use of antibiotics and injections in their meat. If you're watching my daughter Lizzie right now, shout out to Lizzie, who is on this venture now. My she oldest is daughter, a food warrior. She is. Every time I she finds out we're Pure going through warrior. a drive through <laughs> Go through a drive-thru. Yeah. Dad, do you know what kind of Dad, chemicals are Dad, in these things? Dad, what's that noise? Are you in the drive-thru again? Yeah. Dad, Dad. Dad, I thought you were. I thought you were a carnivore, only eating meat, raw meat that you that you uh, grad, grass fed yourself and all this kind of stuff. So yeah, but but yeah, uh, okay. This is going to talk about Jesus chicken. So y'all get ready. Your favorite fast food restaurant it, or food company? It. Hurts it hurts me. It hurts that we have to talk about Jesus chicken. Jesus chicken. H hide your kids. Your favorite fast food restaurants or food companies may be reneging on their promise to ditch antibiotics in their meats to keep their products cheap and profitable. Tyson Foods and Bonaire Bread have reversed their pledges over the past years to maintain a no antibiotic policy in their meat. Chick fil A, the Jesus chicken. Also announced that it will begin to allow some antibiotics to be used. At least they waited till Stuart Caffey died, right? Yeah, bless his heart. He's in heaven he going, probably what are they doing? not have been able to do all that. At least they're still closed on Sundays. Yeah. No, they said no antibiotics ever was their previous pledge in 2014, but no longer. Mm -hmm. uh, Tyson Foods made a similar pledge in 2017, but reintroduced antibiotics last year based on scientific research and industry learnings. Panera Bread has already begun removing signs from locations that state no antibiotics ever and vegetarian fed. Mm. The move expected to save the company $21 million a year. But At the cost of your Your health. life. Yeah. U.S. Public Interest Research Group, a nonprofit, said popular chains like Burger King, Starbucks, Olive Garden, Panda Express, Little Caesars, Domino's, Buffalo Wild Wings, and Pizza Hut were all given an F wow. rating wow. or F grade for antibiotics in their meat. Oof. But Chipotle was given an A. Okay. So this is for Go Chipotle. Chipotle. So for whatever reason, Chipotle is standing their ground for no antibiotics. One of the concerns about ingesting these antibiotics, Sandy, is the risk of weakening the effectiveness of antibiotics mm. for humans. I'm trying to hold my laughter from Delane. Oh, God. He's always trying to be such a quick-witted one. <laughs> <laughs> I just read it too. Hide your chickens too. The antibody and everybody up in here. 
<laughs> good one, Delay. Mm. Good one. Good one. <laughs> we got a lively chat tonight. Yes. We started talking about church and we lost about 50 to 60 viewers, but that's okay. We're going to start talking about Mark it's Driscoll. too bad you didn't stay till the end. Yeah, that's right, because you're going to miss a you're lot. You're going to miss something important. Yeah, all them people that checked out, they don't mm-hmm. like to mm-hmm. talk about church. They just want you to talk about the stuff Weffers. like the World Economic Forum, them Weffers and Heifers. And heifers. <sighs> the Weffers and Heifers. It's the Weffers and Heifers. The WF orders ICANN. If you don't know what ICANN is, mm-hmm. ICANN, I'm going to show you just a second. See, to seize website domains that publish, wait for it, Non-mainstream content. Which, by the way, if anybody can confirm this, just before the air, I had several people saying to me that Klaus Schwab was in the hospital. I heard that as well. Okay. So have you confirmed that? No, I've not. Okay. But I did hear someone say, and oh, yeah, by the way, he's in the hospital anyway. So mm. don't know. Yeah, if someone can confirm. I'm and, talking about not not somebody saying that. I want some confirmation that right. he really is Probably in. won't tell you why he is, right. but if they do, let us know. Yes, Olive Garden does you use antibiotics. If somebody's asking, I see that. Mm. The World Economic Forum has ordered the Internet Company or Internet Corporation for assigned names and numbers, ICANN, to, quote, wage war on conspiracy theorists. Wow. Watch this. By seizing domains of websites that publish non-mainstream content online. Mm. Wow. It says that ICANN needs to expand its control over domain registration limitations. That's what ICANN is. When you register a domain like LarryRagon.com or something like that, you have to go. ICANN is the one that holds it. But by the way, a little tidbit that I don't think this article says, up until the Obama administration, exactly. America controlled ICANN. He gave it over. And he gave it over yep, to a global he entity. Sure did. He turned it over. Thanks, Obama. W funded nonprofit says ICANN needs to expand its control over domain registration limitation to include so-called disinformation policies in addition to phishing and malware. This would mean that ICANN would be granted powers to police who is allowed to register websites based on their adherence to official narratives. Well, they didn't waste any time because we've talked about the disinformation and mm-hmm. misinformation, right? Yep. It is disingenuous, just for the record, for the EU Disinfo Lab to claim independence when a large percentage of its funding comes from none other than the Open Society Foundations, which are a project of billionaire agitator George Soros. The Open Society Foundation is already testing the waters concerning the repurposing of ICANN to become a tool for targeting disinformation Basically, sites. Basically, they're telling you right here, yep. hey, we're just going to go ahead and weaponize this great system, I can, mm-hmm. so deal with it. Exactly. Attempting to directly enlist I can would be highly controversial, put, to put it lightly, at least at this stage, says someone from Reclaim the Net. Given its importance in the Internet infrastructure, I can manages domains globally, and the, fact con- and the fact content control is not among its tasks. Uh, this would represent a huge departure from the organization's role as we understand it today. Now, there's something called Internet 2.0. Internet 2.0, you're going to hear a lot about it, is a censorship nightmare. It sounds like it. Yep. Utilizing, this is within Internet 2.0, the structure already created by ICANN, this 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 info lab is urging ICANN to basically police the entire Internet in search of anything the powers that be considered as disinformation. Doing this, the group argues, would require a minimal amount of diligence and cooperation. Now, it goes on to say in this article, uh, if I can get down here to this, that they started this. There it is right now. Truth be told, ICANN was already doing something similar during the wah wow. wow. Domain names containing the word COVID, along with other related terms, were probed to see if they were trying to use such keywords to mask phishing or malware proliferation operations. In other words, it was not yet about trying to moderate any content related to wow but what is being proposed now is a type of moderation format in which they would have the authority to strike entire website domains found guilty of spreading disinformation this is chilling it is because disinformation 
is only disinformation to the people that don't like the information. And, you know, the fact that they are talking about this and telling you that it's going to happen, that part's not surprising. The speed with which they are moving to do these things is what is surprising to me. And the words you just used, the speed. Remember, you referenced it a while ago, Sandy. They come out, the World Economic came out with those two years list, dangers list. Remember, mm-hmm. there's a 10 year list. Oh, yeah. Climate change is still number one at number at the 10 year list. But in the two year list, starting this year, number one most dangerous thing in the world is misinformation and disinformation. Yep. Now, look at this yep. the United Nations climate chief says we have two years wow. to save the planet. Says more money is needed, of course, increases in gender equality as well. Of course, because that is so important to save the planet. To say when you're thinking about um, air quality and life expectancy and making sure we have enough safe food, of course, you're going to think about your gender equality, right? <laughs> this is so, this, this is, this is literally like the Babylon Bee. That's what he's talking about. He's like, the, the Babylon Bee is about to be out of business because when you read the real news, it's like something that would be on satire. United Nations Climate Change Executive Secretary Simon Steele said in a speech today in London that if governments and people of the world don't put their climate change protocols into high gear now, the world will be ruined in two years. He did a lecture called Two Years to Save the World and explained why the next two years is so essential in saving our planet and how there's no room for half measures. One of the things that need to be increased immediately is a quantum leap in climate finance this year, 2024. As of today, national climate plans called Nationality Determination Contribute, or NDCs, is an aggregate with barely cut emissions at all by 2030. There's that 2030 again. Went on to imply that uh, the thing defeating climate change outweighs trying to cure pandemics or even poverty and hunger, and even suggested that increasing gender equality can help curbing climate change. Mm. Someone please help me understand how increasing gender equality is going to affect the climate. You have any ideas? Well, because I say so. True, exactly. Duh, you know, obviously. That's all you have to worry about. Do as you're told. Mm. Don't think for yourself. Mm-hmm, exactly, mind on robots. Dangerous, dangerous. Wow, 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 wow. But they're just trying to restore trust. Well, I have one more breaking news thing, and then and I think old Uncle Jimmy might be on his way. Thank God. Well, I say that now, but I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. This, this is, this is break, this is, Landmark. What I'm about to tell you is if you ever needed a sign to know that what they are putting in our bodies and what they're doing in this world is trying to take us out and that nothing is real anymore, is real (laughs) and nothing is as it seems. Ladies and gentlemen, this is shocking news. A shocking video has now arisen that proves. So messed up. That a popular United States ice cream treat, and by the way, this is my weakness. I love me some ice cream. Mm. Takes 22 hours. It is your kryptonite. To melt. Not that one. Yep. Oh, Oh, yep. The one that you love as well. I like that one too. We all know there's something strange going on with our food in the United States. All you have to do is take a trip abroad, and you will instantly Mm. notice a difference in how you feel. Most people report feeling less bloated, lighter, and more Mm -hmm. satiated. This has caused many people to wonder what on earth is going on with the food supply in America. We're inundated with processed junk food, sugar, seed oil. Shout out to my daughter, Lizzie, again. (laughs) Corn and other fillers and preservatives. And many people are starting to feel as if they are being slowly poisoned. Hmm. And things get even dicier when you compare the food scene in America to what's going on. In Europe. But then it goes on to say from baguettes to, how do you say that? Focaccia. Focaccia, blah, 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 blah. It then reveals to us 
about what's in what is called ice cream. Will I get to it? There it is. I've seen multiple videos of ice cream not melting right after or a few hours, but this video is after 22 hours. This is a the famous drumstick. I love drumsticks. Ladies and gentlemen, let's watch this. What you're looking at here is the aftermath of a drumstick ice cream cone that has been sitting out for 22 hours now. Um, this I set this out yesterday at okay. 6 or 7 p.m. And now I'm just playing the video. Mm -hmm. If anyone has done this experiment yourself, oh my goodness. please oh let us know. My goodness. I will probably do this experiment myself. But if this is true, this is alarming. We are striking that from any future grocery shopping list. And this is the outcome. It, what? I mean, it. if you watch my previous video, mm. you'll see how after about two hours, the ice cream didn't melt, or melt at all. God. So this is the outcome after almost 24 hours. Is this real? Is this is have I been punked? Is this really legitimate? Listen, from memory, this is this what I would compare thing. it to. The person that the puts the McDonald's hamburger on the shelf and a year later it still looks the same. <laughs> and this was years ago, by the way. Was that real? Did it's, that really happen? They said it was real. Okay. So <sighs> yeah. All right. You, yeah. got, you have to ruin everything. Yeah, that's right. I mean, look. I, it's nothing sacred. It's the big picture. I got to show you everything. The good, the bad, and the ugly. There it comes. Jimmy! Oh, Uncle Jimmy. Yep. Yeah. The Supernatural AI Update. If you're new to our channel, this is the moment you've been waiting for. Mm -hmm. uh, so right off the bat, a uh, little lighthearted, not so lighthearted, actually. Mm -hmm. Microsoft is saying that China plans to disrupt the elections with AI-generated disinformation. Well, there you go again. More disinformation. More disinformation. Ladies and gentlemen, I I am about to go down a rabbit hole, and I, I'm, I, I just hope I'm wrong, but I got a feeling there are people that are trying to not have an actual election. Mm, wow. I mean, I just got a feeling that for the first time. You're going to go on the it, record with that, okay? I've heard it said, and I'm just going to say it myself now. Mm -hmm. I believe it's very possible that something dramatic with the war that's happening, with all the AI that's, that's at work and all the deception, then you've got. Right. You've got a candidate that's running for president that there's no way he's going to be able to debate. Something just sort of feels like we may not see an election, or at least it's going to be changed mm. dramatically. Did you hear that, NSA? Did you hear that, YouTube algorithm? Yes, I said it. I wasn't projecting anything other than I just have a feeling. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Got any comments? Well... I hate to disagree with you in that statement, but yeah, it does come to mind as at least being maybe uh, maybe remote possibility. I don't know how possible it is, but I think it's uh, at least in the category of possibilities. Absolutely. Well, let's let's look at this one little part here. Of this article it says that Beijing is expected to ramp up sophisticated AI-generated disinformation campaigns to influence several high-profile elections in 2024. Can you think of any high-profile elections in 2024? Does any really high-profile 2024 election come to mind? Okay, we know we're talking about our election, but what percentage of the world I think we talked about this? Is it 40? I think it's 40-something 40, 40, 40 percent a, of the whole world right. is, it, is having elections right. this year. That's what I'm getting at. So that's a lot that could be interrupted. So. Yep, Billy, you're right. NSA has now entered the chat. I'm sure that they're in here right now. 
I don't think they just entered. Listen. I think I'm on a list for sure. For the record. <laughs> I'm on a list. We just assume they're listening, so we talk we, to them all we the do time talk to them. at y'all, our house. It's fun. Y'all should all start doing that it. Time. In so, the car and everything. We, we'll say things, and then we'll mm-hmm. realize. We'll just say, hey, NSA, did, did you, hear, you that? hear that? Did you hear that? What do you think about that? Yeah. What you, how, What are you going to do with that? <laughs> Whatever. Woo. So we just, we just go ahead and <laughs> we know they're watching. We know they're listening. Listen, y'all, I covered this on the show, and I want to say it again real quick before we go into this to this next uh, this last one. we got one more thing to show you that's just, wow. I'm telling you, I believe, Sandy, there is something about facial expressions or whatever. They're reading my mind because mm-hmm. this has happened several times okay. where I've not been in no conversations. Yeah. I have not thought about anything. I mean, I've not told anybody what I'm thinking about, and I get asked the things I'm thinking about. It's weird. I'm like, how are you gonna do that? Well, they're they've got a really <laughs> good high percentage what? of predictability. But I'll be typing a text, and I'm thinking, okay, look, you know, you could guess, you could, but there is no way they could have predicted that what? I was going to think, say, try to type that. How are they doing this? AI, baby, AI knows so. you. They know you, Sandy. They know what you're thinking about typing, so they go ahead and type it for you. But now sometimes the things they suggest ain't nothing what I was thinking. Mm. I'm like, you tried to make me think that. I, I agree with that, too. Yeah. So I think that's, that's definitely It's part of possible. programming, too. As well. Well, the last thing we'll cover tonight is UFOs are going mainstream. Mm-hmm. All right. So, yep, that's old Uncle Jimmy. Uncle Jimmy's going mainstream. Sometimes it's just a balloon, or it might be a drone. Some travel at high speeds. And switch directions and hover, then disappear. Sensors pick up some of them. Others fly under the radar. Mm-hmm. Unidentified flying objects, UFOs, have been a part of popular lore for decades. But governments have lately been trying to harden, harder, harder to find out what is fantasy and what is fact. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they're trying so, so hard. Private Enterprise is starting to crowdsource UFO data, hoping to provide governments and other institutions with evidence that they investigate. Mm. But the reason I want to show this article is, is it because we're just Americans and we're just because Americans think we're going to always do it before anybody else and we're the best and all this? That's why we, we, we still go with Fahrenheit. We still go with Miles. We do not accept that metric system that all the rest of you are wrong about. (laughs) Y'all need to come back to us. But this is UFO sightings reported October 23rd, 2022 through April 4th, 2024 around the world. There's only 1,151 that's in the whole area over there near Asia and Europe. And very few, look how few people, few sections Mm, in Africa. Exactly. Look at America. America, America. Would it surprise you to know that I don't believe that? You don't believe (laughs) that? It's accurate. Okay. So what's this? Uh, Do you not believe America is the most prominent to see? uh, I think it's definitely possible. But in my mind, there would have been more reported and far, far more than that that we're seeing because a lot of people they're not reporting anything to anybody. I understand, but what I'm saying is, but the reporting is, looks is, under what it, it should be. But isn't it interesting? Yeah, I understand the numbers are under. Mm. But isn't it interesting? There's eleven thousand three hundred twelve versus versus one thousand one hundred fifty one. Ridiculous. All in that area of, in that area of Europe, mm. and then when you look at the small circles, the larger part of Africa showing nothing. Yeah, please come yeah, on. Yeah, come on. So you see the circles, the, the legend down here. The big circle, like the one in America, is 10,000 plus. The smaller circle that like you see over in Europe mm-hmm. area is 1,000, and the tiny ones are one. Okay? So, you know, between one and 1,000. Yeah, we're really turning this thing over and yeah. revolutionizing things, right? So the article goes on to, to show all the different types of crafts that people are seeing, Um you know, whether they are circles, spheres, lights, discs, other shapes, percentages, uh, UAPs come in many sizes and shapes. And then I think this is interesting here. This is the map of the United States. Yeah. 
And they're showing, you look at the color chart, one being the light pink and the black being the highest. And these are the, this is the United States and the states. Look at Alabama. Alabama's like right up here at the top, man. It's pretty close. <laughs> but look, there's one New black Mex- state. New Mexico. New Mexico. What is it, New Mexico? Some important labs. Dulce. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like the highest reported state in America that's seeing supposed UFOs. Okay. So, all right, Sandy, are UFOs, what are UFOs? Unidentified flying objects? No, what are they? What are aliens? What are aliens? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, they're demonic. Mm. It's. Uh, are they interplanetarian? Are they interdimensional? Well, there's arguments for both sides of that. Yep. Some people believe they're both. Yep. And some people believe they're nothing, that they're just imagination. People's imagination and people's not seeing anything. Yep. Some people think that, but I think they're seeing something. But, you know, it's. Uh, we want to um, just sh- call everything demonic, and I do believe yeah. that it's based in that. But there are reports of so many different entities and types of, you know, if you want to call them creatures or whatever. But, yep. yeah, I would have to go back to saying, yeah, the central thing is that they— are demonic or come from the demonic realm. Mm. Would you like to help us build the big picture family? We're on a mission to wake up the world to what is really going on. All you have to do is go to our website at LarryRaglan.com and make a one-time gift, or you can become a monthly partner. Any amount is a blessing and an encouragement to us. While you're there, make sure you get a copy of our book, I See Greatness in You. Browse our merchandise store. Connect with us on our social media links and join our mailing list. We appreciate it. And remember, we ain't woke, but we are certainly awake. We are not woke, but we are certainly yeah. awake. And we are thankful for everybody joining yes, us tonight are. for another edition of the Big Picture Thank Live. Thank you for and being here. Who you got with you? Somebody wants to say hello. Oh, our little friend Cosmo wants to say goodbye Cosmo. to everybody. Let's go down here so he turns blue. He's Look. glad to be here. Now he's blue. We he, missed him last week. He's really green. He did not go on the road with us. He didn't so. go on the road, but we're glad to be back. We're glad that you yes. were here tonight. Yes, yes, Thank yes. you for all the super chats. Thank you for all the Woo-hoo! super thanks. He's clapping his hands. Thank you for all our partners. We love you. Share this broadcast. Send it to as many people as you can. Let's build a big picture family. And we always want to remind you we ain't woke, but we are certainly, certainly up.